All right, so today I want to talk about 12 different types of bedding that you can use for keeping and breeding rodents. I've actually been breeding mice and rats for about five years now, and I produce quite a few. I'd say I'm probably on a larger scale than most people. I'm producing several hundred rodents every month to feed all my snakes here in my reptile room. And I'd say as far as bedding, there's a lot of pros and cons to every individual bedding, and I keep going back and forth between the different types of bedding. As a matter of fact, the bedding that I'm using now, most people don't actually recommend using that type of bedding and what it really comes down to especially in a large scale it comes down to the cost of the bedding and let me tell you I could probably use a better bedding but it would cost me a lot more money especially in a larger scale and the other thing that you have to keep in mind when you're looking at different beddings is the amount of smell that it will actually remove from the enclosure some of them that really don't absorb a lot of smell sometimes you have to change them out a lot more frequently than some of the other ones and some of them the rodents really don't like that type of bedding and some of them are actually dangerous to keep your rodents on so I actually made a list of 12 different types of rodents I just want to go down from the top to the bottom and the one I'm using right now is number one on my list and that is pine shavings and let me tell you if you talk to most people most people will say absolutely do not use pine shavings especially if you get into the pet quality side of breeding rodents a lot of people will say there's a lot safer options. As a matter of fact, when I first started in keeping rodents, I actually decided, all right, I'm going to go all in. I'm going to buy some really fancy rodent racks. I bought the ones from ARS and I bought some rodents and I was breeding them and I filled my rack up and I started using pine shavings. And to my surprise, some of my rodents were dying. Every week I was losing a few rodents and I thought it was a disease or something going through my rack. And what I actually did is I started treating all my rodents with antibiotics and a whole bunch of different stuff trying to figure out why are my rats dying come to find out that pine is actually toxic which is pretty interesting if you actually take pine you know the really sweet pine smell that you smell from any type of pine well that smell is actually toxic not only to rats but it's toxic to all animals so if you get your Christmas tree in the middle of the winter and the whole house smells like pine that smell is actually toxic it's not very good good for your liver which is pretty surprising so what I actually did I decided all right I'm gonna switch my bedding and I switched through a whole bunch of different beddings and let me tell you it was some of them were real expensive some of them didn't absorb a lot of odors and then I was just completely exasperated I went down to a, a reptile store down in Denver and they were breeding some rats in the back of the reptile store and I told the guy hey I'm a totally exasperated as far as you know I'm losing rodents I need a better bedding what do you recommend and he actually recommended a different type of pine bedding and he said he's been using it for 30 years and never had had any of his rats die from the toxicity of the pine so I pretty much stuck with a certain brand that this guy's always used but I'd say most pine it can be pretty toxic to some degree and it's kind of interesting I actually have rats and mice it seems like the rats are more sensitive to the pine toxicity versus the mice I would never lost any of my mice to the toxicity of pine which is kind of interesting all right, so number two, you can actually use some type of pellets, and they make a whole bunch of different types. They make pine pellets, hardwood pellets, wood stove pellets, and you can actually get horse stall pellets, pellets that are designed for horse stalls as far as bedding for your horses. And I've tried several different types of pellets. As a matter of fact, when I kind of switched away from the pine shavings, I switched over to different types of pellets. And kind of the interesting thing about the pellets is I've noticed that the rats do not like to walk on the pellets. I'll fill the tub with pellets and let me tell you those rats do not like it. As a matter of fact if you actually take a tub and split it in half, do half shavings on one side, half pellets on the other side, they will never go on the side with the pellets which is kind of an interesting thing. I'll also notice that with the pellets if you put them in your tubs and the rats are running around on the pellets it is really noisy. You can really hear the rats in the tubs running around on the pellets and some people say that the pine 
pellets are kind of problematic because they disintegrate into kind of a sawdust and you really want to reduce the amount of dust in your enclosures because it can give your rodents some respiratory infection problems. So you kind of want to stay away from that. Although I have seen people where they'll actually mix the pellets and the shavings in the same tub. So what they'll do is they'll take a scooper of the pellets, put it in the bottom of the tub, and then they'll put a top coat on of the shavings to give the rodents something to walk on. And then the pellets will give you a little bit more of an absorbing factor as far as absorbing some of the, the mess in the tub. But I also found that the pellets can be really heavy. Some of those bags, you know, bringing them in, they're like 50 pound bags of pellets. It seems like they don't go as far as bringing in the compressed shavings that I've been using. So that's another thing to keep in mind. All right, so number three, probably the safest thing, the, the pretty much the ultimate bedding is aspen shavings. So aspen kind of gets away from the problem from the pine toxicity, and it looks almost exactly like the pine shavings. You can actually get them in the compressed blocks. But the problem with aspen is, matter of fact, I actually went to the, the pet store. <laughs> it, was, it was actually a feed store where I get most of my rodent food and all my, pet, my bedding for my rodents. And I was like, hey, do you have any aspen? And they said, yes. We actually have aspen. It's the same size as the pine. I actually have one of the compressed blocks. I think it's like 10 cubic feet that's compressed down to these really heavy compressed blocks of pine. They said they had the same thing in aspen, but the problem is, is the cost. It was pretty much out of reach as far as doing aspen. So I can actually buy one of those blocks of pine. And I think it cost me like $7 or something for a block of pine. And the aspen was like $33 a block and I go through I think it's like three blocks a week so I'd go from like I think it's like $21 a week to like over a hundred dollars a week let me tell you I cannot afford to do the Aspen it's, it's kind of a, a balance between especially when you're raising your own rodents there's really two expenses that it comes down to the food and the bedding if you can get the bedding to really kind of really cut the cost of the bedding or to get it to zero then really all you have to pay for is the food Food. And I actually tried to skimp on the food on my rodents for a while. And let me tell you, you definitely want to go to a really high end, like a Missouri rodent feeder, as far as a really high quality food to keep your rodents in good condition. All right, so number four, I've actually tried this for a while, and that is shredded office paper, which is pretty much the ideal bedding. I'd say the, the, it's kind of interesting. I was actually working at a laboratory, and we shredded all of our documents, and we had tons and tons of shredded paper. And at the time, I actually found out that the recycling companies, which we used a lot, they couldn't take the shredded paper. So we'd take all the shredded paper and throw it in the dumpster. And I always felt like I was more green using some of the shredded paper you know saving the landfill and I was giving it a use as the bedding for my rodents but what I found out with shredded paper is that it doesn't really absorb odors very well over the long haul I'd say probably after two or three days I'd have to go through and replace all the bedding and all my rodents which was a lot of work even though the bedding was free versus if I'm using pine usually I can get away with like four or five days using a thick layer of pine which really absorbs the smell a lot better than the paper and there's also other paper products that you can use as a matter of fact if you actually go to some of the pet stores they'll have you know like the the paper that's shredded and sometimes I've actually seen like a shredded paper with like sodium bicarbonate impregnated in there to reduce the smells I've seen some products where they'll take paper and compress it into pellets and you have like a pelleted paper product for some of these products in the pet stores but the problem is is on a really large scale it's it's not really practical for me to actually do something like that with you know producing so many rats so I'd say if you had just a pet rat or just a couple pet rats you could probably do something like a paper product it'd probably be the safest out of all the products that you could actually use all right, so number five, you can actually use a landscaping mulch. And at one point, I got really desperate because I was I was kind of in the transition, transitioning away from the pine, which I found out was really toxic. And I was like scrambling, all right, what can I use? And at one point, I actually went to the hardware store and I started using landscape material. It was like a natural shredded wood mulch that I was using. The problem is, is it worked pretty good, but it was really bulky and heavy and it was really expensive 
expensive too. And let me tell you, that's probably the most expensive betting that I had out of all my bettings that pretty much broke the bank. But it worked really well for my rats and it had the chunks of wood that the rats could chew on and it really helps to maintain the, the size of their teeth if they have a little bit something to chew on in the tubs. So that's one thing I tried. One thing you want to stay away from if you're using any type of a wood, you definitely want to stay away from cedar because cedar is even more toxic than pine. You definitely don't want anything in your enclosure that's made of cedar. Definitely no cedar shavings or anything like that. All right, so number six, I haven't actually tried this, but I've seen some people that use grass hay, like the regular hay for cows or horses. And as a matter of fact, I actually have a whole trailer full of hay. I haven't actually used it. And the problem is, is it's really long and stringy. I think it'd be hard to really get in the tub and lay flat, but I've seen some people using hay as an alternative. Any kind of grass hay would be ideal. One thing you want to watch out for if you bring anything from outside is you want to avoid bringing in any type of parasite like ticks or mites or something like that. That's probably one of the reasons that I definitely wouldn't use anything from outside to bring it in to put it into my rodent enclosures. All right, so number seven, I've actually heard some people using ordinary towels, like a hand towel or a bath towel. And that's a kind of an interesting concept. I've seen some people where they'll say they'll put a towel in their enclosure and then after a few days, as a matter of fact, they, they say usually after one or two days because it's not very absorbent, they'll take the towels out and replace the towels and throw all the towels in the washing machine and reuse the towels over and over. I thought that was kind of a clever way to cut your bedding expense to pretty much zero other than your laundry detergent and electricity to actually be doing laundry every couple days. So that, that's kind of interesting. But the other thing is with the towels, you really don't have the absorbency and the reduction of smells that you'd see in some of the other beddings. All right, so number eight, I've actually seen some people using corn cob litter, like a corn cob. It's, like, it's almost like a like a broken up corn cob that's it almost looks like kitty litter. As a matter of fact, I've seen some kitty litter that's made of corn cob, and I've actually seen some people say they've used it for years, never had any problems. And then on the flip side, I've heard some people say never use the corn cob litter because it has a tendency to mold. And I would think it really probably comes down to the amp humidity as far as where you're at so if you live somewhere like in the tropics where the humidity is 90% I probably wouldn't use anything that's made of corn cob because it could probably mold in the tub especially if you're using like a rack system and I know sometimes in my rack systems the rats like to get up and kind of play with the little water nozzles just kind of goofing around like playing with the water nozzle and it kind of floods the the front part of the tub where all my pine in the front of the tub gets a little bit wet and kind of compacted in the front but if I move those rodents into another tub and leave that tub completely empty, it doesn't leak out. So I know it's not the nozzle leaking, it's just the rats kind of playing around in the tub. You'll actually find that you think, you know, you kind of look through your, your rodent rack, you think, oh, all my nozzles are leaking. And sometimes it can actually be just the rodents kind of playing around with the nozzles, which is kind of interesting. But if you actually had some kind of a system like that and you use corn cob with the, the water building up and the little bit of the front of the tub, I think you probably could run into mold issues with the corn cob bedding. All right, so number nine, I've heard some people use this using rabbit food, rabbit pellets. And I don't know how expensive rabbit pellets are. Maybe you can get them pretty cheap at something like a feed store in a 50 pound bag or something like that. I don't know if something else would be a little bit cheaper, but essentially what the rabbit pellets are, they're compressed alfalfa and grass hay in one little pellet. It's kind of like the wood pellet, but you're kind of bypassing the problem with a pine. So it'd be a good alternative for a bedding in there. Of course, I don't know if the rodents would like to step on the pellets, so you might have to have something on top of the pine pellets to kind of comfort it. As a matter of fact, you could probably use like the rabbit pellets on the bottom and then cover it with like shredded paper, something like that. That might be the ideal combination of bedding between the two. 
All right, so number 10, I've seen this a lot with pet rats, and that is fleece. A lot of people use fleece, especially if you can potty train your rat. I've seen some people where, believe it or not, you can potty train your rat to go to the bathroom in a certain spot in the cage and keep the fleece really clean. A lot of people use fleece for like a bedding material on a lot of your pet rat cages. You'll see that's pretty much the number one thing that I've seen a lot of pet rat owners use as far as a bedding material. It's really super soft and you can throw it in the washer and wash the fleece and just keep using it over and over and over. All right, so number 11, this is really big in Colorado, and that is hemp. You can actually use the kind of the shredded up stems of the hemp. And of course, the hemp is like uh, where they get the CBD from. It's like the non-THC version of the marijuana that they have legalized here in Colorado. So everyone's kind of going crazy over the whole, as a matter of fact, they actually legalized marijuana here, but the, the lot of, you know, kind of on the flip side is they have the whole CBD thing with the hemp and they sell the CBD CBD now in all the gas stations and everywhere and all these farmers are actually producing an enormous amount of this hemp material essentially what it is is these woody stems that they grind up into a bedding material which is pretty common at some of your reptile shows I've actually been to reptile shows with a lot of whole tables of nothing but hemp bedding which is pretty interesting I've seen some people using them for snakes and other reptiles and you could potentially use them for your rodents as well. All right, so number 12, the last thing on my list, and that is coconut fiber, which I haven't actually used as far as a bedding for the rats. You, I've actually seen some of the coconut blocks that are compressed. I actually use the, the coconut husk chips for my ball pythons as a bedding. And I found that the fiber is kind of like a really stringy material that doesn't really absorb a lot of humidity. It's not really good for ball pythons here in my really dry climate. It doesn't really absorb a lot of smells, but as far as a bedding for rats, I could definitely see an advantage. And I'd say probably the best bedding that I've actually seen is something where you have a thick layer, you know, like several inches thick, some kind of a thick bedding where if they go to the bathroom and they keep running over the top of it eventually they'll turn that bedding over and over and it's almost like a self-cleaning bedding where it kind of self-cleans itself until all the bedding underneath is kind of full with all the kind of all the waste under there so I'd say probably what I do is I just use you know some kind of bedding where you can actually build it up several inches and then you kind of replace it there's I mean there's pros and cons to every bedding I could definitely see the advantage of using like a regular hand towel or something especially if you just had a few rats and you wanted to cut your betting expenses to zero. There's a lot of different options out there. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.